Did you know that Ang wasn't always supposed to be a monk? This is just one out of 31 facts that I will be explaining today and I can guarantee that fact 27 will shock you. In early developments, the creators of the show wasn't always going to call Avatar well the Avatar. Instead, they were going to call him the Keystone Being because they wanted him to be the key being that restored balance to the world. Could you imagine asking your friends if they are caught up with the Keystone Being? It's not given. The four nations were inspired by real life ancient cultures. The water tribes were inspired by the Inuit and Yupik people of Russian descent who are also very similar to Eskimos. We can see the parallel with their clothes and also their living habitats and culture. The Earth Kingdom was inspired by monarchical China, copying how they dressed and just their overall culture. China in the 1900s had very strict imperial rule and very rigid monarchic systems. This explains the immense segregation in Ba Sing Se along with the monarchic system in the Earth Kingdoms. <laughs> There was a time in history when Japan was known for their incredible power during a period called the Maji Restoration. This inspired the development of the Fire Nation because in the Avatar verse, the Fire Nation is known for their army power and scientific developments, very similar to the Japanese Empire of that time. Air nomads were obviously inspired by the Buddhist monks because of their passive and nomadic lifestyle. I'm pretty sure you all knew that much. But before the development of the four nations, the creators of the show imagined Aang coming from an ancient lost civilization that had futuristic technology. Hence why I said he wasn't always supposed to be a monk. Momo wasn't supposed to be the loving flying lemur we all know. Instead, he was supposed to be Aang's robotic sidekick. This sketch was actually taken from a book made by Avatar Studios and I imagine it being somewhat like Atlantis before it sunk so I took inspiration from that when coloring. The concept of Maya and Tai Li did not change. In the early stages, they were always supposed to be Azula's friends with the exact same personalities and skill set we see on screen. Appa was supposed to have spiral horns. After thinking about how difficult it might be to animate, Animate, they simplified the design. Aang wasn't supposed to just have one sky bison. He was first supposed to be a shepherd with a herd of 20 bisons. But after thinking about it some more, the creators thought it was impractical and changed it to a small nuclear family of bisons. Bisons? Who knows? But eventually changed it again to just one. Just imagine drawing three sky bisons every episode for the duration of the show. Apple was also inspired by a manatee. This was actually the first, first, first sky bison design, but it didn't make it to screen. And thank God, because this is just straight up nightmare fuel. Zuko's first design was him with a samurai influence wick of hair. Just makes me want to light it up like a candle. Luckily, they changed it to the ponytail. Even though ponytail Zuko is still my least favorite design out of all. Sokka was first pitched to be 13 years old, but after careful consideration, they thought it would be better to age him up a bit. Very fitting for the leader of Team Avatar, if I do say so myself. You're the leader? But your voice still cracks. I'm the oldest and I'm a warrior, so I'm the leader. If uncle Iroh wasn't always supposed to be Zuko's uncle. They envisioned Iroh as Zuko's mentor, just a war general that wanted a relaxed life so he accompanied Zuko on his quest while teaching him ways of firebending. The OG story for Iroh didn't change much, but to be honest if they kept Iroh as a mentor and not his uncle, the story wouldn't change much. Toph was supposed to be a boy, but Mike and Brian thought the show would have connected more to a female audience, so they changed it up a bit and the idea of boyish behaviors in a a teenage girl was pretty sick, so they stuck with that. Toph was written to be the strongest earthbender in the entire series, and that's why her fighting style is so unique. All you boomy glazers have nothing more to say. The facts are right here, and the fact that Toph is 12 and she was able to take on Boomy says a lot on its own. But I digress. Katara was actually called Kaya in the pilot episode. Looking good, Kaya. But it was changed because of legal issues. Katara's early close-up designs were done last minute because the creators of the show were too focused on Ang's character design. As stated here, hours before they pitched the show, they had to make these quick concepts. These early character designs remind me of Disney animations. Momo's name wasn't always Momo, instead he was first called Momo 3. But after moving away from the robotic concept, they decided to drop the 3 and just call him Momo. And he almost never made it to the big screen either because Mike and Brian thought it would have been too much to have Ang, Appa and Momo stuck in the iceberg. But they later decided to change it that Momo joined the team after Ang escaped his ice prison. But did you know that Momo tail is also super strong? 
almost like an extra limb capable of taking up stuff. Imagine Momo being as skilled as Nightcrawler. <laughs> Suki and the Kyoshi warriors were supposed to be a one-time thing, but after Suki and Sokka shared that moment, they decided to keep the characters. That's probably why Suki was forgotten in The Legend of Korra, because she wasn't all that developed. Who knows? Toph was the third person to learn earthbending from the Badgermos, with the first being Oma and Shu, lovers from the ancient Earth Kingdom. The city was later named after these two. Shu was killed because of a war between the two towns and Oma declared the war finished after displaying her great bending abilities. The word avatar in Hindi translates to reincarnation or the manifestation of a deity in human form. Jet was inspired by Samurai Champloo and Cowboy Biba with his skills, charisma and personality. Jet specifically took a lot of inspiration from Spike, the MC of Cowboy Biba. The first avatar was one. He gained the ability of fire from the lion turtle that he lived on, but he was banished into the spirit wilds. From there, he interfered with Rava and Vatu, then gained the other abilities to defeat Vatu. And this fact is the one that you've all been waiting for. Did you know that there are no take backsies in Omashu, said by King Bumi himself? There are no take backsies in my kingdom. Very interesting, I know. Deserving of a subscribe. Uncle Iroh was not shown in the pilot episode, which I find very interesting because Zuko demonstrated great skills in the pilot, taking down the serpent from the serpent pass all by himself. Did you know that sculptures of the lion turtles were at Master Piendo's castle? Check this out. It probably missed you, so let me show you again. That's a very exquisite detail if I do say so myself. And even though this series takes inspiration from many ethnic backgrounds, most of the inspiration is taken from Asian culture, specifically cultures like Japan, China, and Korea, shown in the character's design and most of the clothing. But as a certified avatar enjoyer, even I didn't know some of these facts. So how much did you know? Also, like the video if you enjoyed and try watching another one. You might enjoy that one too.